plenty of Lent, is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. Brethren, be ye followers of God, his most dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath delivered himself for us, an oblation and a sacrifice, to God, for an odor of sweetness, a fornication in all uncleanness and or covetousness, that not so much as be named among you, as become as saints, nor obscenity, nor foolish talking, nor scurrility, which is to no purpose, but rather giving of thanks, for know ye this, and understand that no fornicator nor unclean person, nor covetous person, which is the servant of idols, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the anger of God upon the children of unbelief. But ye be ye not therefore partakers with them, for you were heretofore darkness, but now light in the Lord. Walk ye as children of the light, for the fruit of the light is in all goodness and justice and truth. And in the Gospel. Take that according to St. Luke, chapter 11. At that time Jesus was casting out a devil, and the same was dumb. When he had cast out the devil, the dumb spoke, and the multitude were in admiration at it. But some of them said, He cast out devils by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. And others tempting asked him of him a sign from heaven. But he, seeing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself shall be brought low, brought to desolation, and house upon house shall fall. And if Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because you say that through Beelzebub I cast out devils. Now if I cast out devils by Beelzebub, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I by the finger of God cast out devils, doubtless the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man armed is keeping his court, those things which he possesseth are in peace. But if a stronger than he come upon him, and overcome him, he will take away all his armor wherein he trusted, and will distribute his spoils. He that is not with me is against me. He that gathereth not with me scattereth. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through places without water, seeking rest. And not finding, he saith, I will return into my house, whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then he goeth and taketh with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And entering him, they dwell there, and the last state of that man becometh worse than the first. And it came to pass as he spoke these things, that a certain woman from the crowd, lifting up her voice, said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore thee, and the paps that gave thee suck. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they who hear the word of God, and keep it. And that's for the words of today's holy gospel. Of today, in the last few days, a little supernatural test has been given to us, and that is this uh, coronavirus that has been brought out in the last few days, and creating panic in the United States. The last week in Canada, this week in the United States. And it is interesting that it fits a time in the sacred scripture reading where we read about Jacob and Esau in the last few days. And that Jacob and Esau were both in front of Isaac. And they both said the same words to Isaac on the day that Isaac gave his blessing. And he was going to give his blessing to Esau. And so both said, I am your son Esau. Both said that they were ready. And Esau went, and he went to go hunting, and he came back too late. In fact, he was already many years too late. And remember also, in the time of the flood, as we mentioned multiple times, in the time of the flood, the door of the ark was closed eight days before the actual flood, the waters began to pour. And the day that the waters began to pour, there were many souls that wanted to get into the ark. Not one was allowed in. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, You know not the day or the hour. We don't know the day or the hour. Our soul is either already prepared for the day and the hour of the visitation of Christ, or it is not prepared. 
and it is not time to repair at the last moment. So that we have today, since the last few weeks, all toilet paper is sold out. Everybody trying to get toilet paper all over. Hand cleaner sold for $286 for a thing of hand cleaner. Roll of toilet paper for $26. Bucks. Time to buy stock and toilet paper and hand cleaner. I was getting on the plane yesterday. I saw all the guys in first class. I in the important person section to get on with the important people. And, uh, you know, since I fly all the time. And walking behind some of the people getting on in first class, everyone pulled out their wipes. And everybody was wiping completely the seats with great seriousness to make sure they didn't get any virus. Now the fact is that this is a test. It's a two-sided test. It's a test of the one welders, a test of the Bilderbergers, a test of the bad guys, to see how well their systems are in place, to see how, how much the sheeple will obey them without any strong evidence of a crisis. And, what the, and how much will they listen to everything? What is this a little test of their systems? One, two days ago, they reported 1,920 cases of coronavirus in the United States and 41 deaths. At the same time, this year alone, since now it's, it's March, 22,000 have already died in the United States from the normal flu. The normal flu has not been a crisis, but this is a crisis. There is another motive to see who are going to be, quote-unquote, good citizens. Now they're talking about quarantining the state of Washington, quarantining New York, and quarantining uh, uh, the uh, state of California, so that now we'll be getting there to the point where you've got to have papers to cross the border from one place to another. They already have a rule in China in place that in the Huan province, which is province it is, no one can travel without a cell phone. They must have their cell phone or they will be arrested. And the cell phone says who is approved to go out, who is not approved to go out. The cell phone tells you. I remember in the 1970s when I was a child, I remember hearing, they say in the days before the Antichrist, everyone was going to have their own phone that they can walk around with. There were no walk around phones in the 1970s. And you will not be able to walk without one of your phones. And the phone will tell you whether you are approved or not approved. And now they have implemented a law in China that they cannot walk without their smartphone. They have to have it with them. And the phone says who's approved, who's not approved, logs every movement that they make, and so on. And our phones do exactly the same thing. They just haven't implemented the law yet. He yeah, has ears to hear, let him hear. Who has eyes to see, let him see. The world is preparing for the one world government. It is not a government of our friends. It is not a government of the friends of God. It is a government of the enemies of God. But what is required for it to be successful? It must already be that the people of the world have a different God than God. One God that we have is our health. And interesting also, this virus, you might get sick, you might get sick, you might get sick. And so therefore, ready to take any precautions necessary, give up all of our freedoms, give up all of our rights, Give up all of our privileges, normal privileges human beings have as human beings who are not criminals. And that we will follow whatever directives that our government tells us. And even before they make any laws and regulations. In Canada, they said last week, we're going to make all of the homes into home hospitals. So they will not be able to go to the actual hospital if there is a pandemic breakout of this virus. Your home will be your own hospital. You will have to be quarantined in your home. You have home hospitals and not able to leave your homes. And people have gone out to buy all kinds of toilet paper. What well, is interesting shows the value of modern man. He's interested in toilet paper and what comes out of behind. But he's not interested in what goes in the mouth. He's not interested in what goes in the mind. And remember also that there is a much more serious virus than one that touches the body. There is a virus that is destroying the soul of the church. A virus that is destroying the church. One good thing that came out of this little virus is in Italy, Pope Francis commanded that there will be no masses on Sunday. And having no new masses on Sunday is a good thing. You should extend it all the way out in front of forever. No more masses. No more new masses. Also, there's a directive to some bishops who have the Latin mass in their diocese that it is unsafe to give Holy Communion upon the tongue. Therefore, for as long as the virus is going... 
Men, but everyone must receive communion in the hand, since it's far more sanitary than receiving communion in the tongue. Now, you know, our hands touch more uh, bad things than our tongues ever do. And so it's much worse to touch the hand than it is to touch the tongue. However, that uh, this, this is being this is being done in multiple parishes. That we're have, we still believe in the Latin Mass, but for the sake of health, we're going to have communion in the hand, and not upon the tongue. And it's only a temporary thing. Whenever they make new laws, they're always only temporary. It's just that they don't stop. They made a law called the income tax law, and uh, it's illegal to, to not to file your income tax. And they said this law was made in order to capture uh, capture uh, Al Capone. Well, Al Capone died a long time ago. But income tax did not die a long time ago. It continues, and you can still be arrested for not filing your income tax. It didn't just start with, it started with Al Capone, and they said, we're only doing this because we want to capture a criminal that we can't capture. But don't worry, we'll go back to normal afterwards. But they never did. Now what's happening? There is a test of our souls. And there's a test on both sides, on the side of the devil and on the side of the angels. The devil is giving the test to see how much sheeple we are. How much are ready to listen to the government and listen to all around us and, and do it? And how many are going to be good citizens and cancel all their events? Many companies, without being told by the government, have canceled their meetings, their events all over the country. Schools are being canceled everywhere because of this outbreak of the coronavirus. And yet, in these same schools throughout the early part of this year, there were thousands and perhaps hundreds of thousands of kids who got the virus and flu of this season. 100,000 kids got the flu. They did not stop the school. 22,000 died out of all who had the flu in the last few months. And they didn't stop the school. And they didn't stop government. They didn't stop the functioning of society. It was interesting in 2001, heard once a report of an Irish lady. She was living in America. And she was a little bit older. And she remembers the time of the IRA in Ireland where there would be things being blown up on a regular basis and Catholics being killed by Protestants on a regular basis and they lived in fear in the streets. And she said, we didn't stop living. We didn't stop getting up in the morning. We didn't stop going to work. We didn't stop going to church. We didn't stop going shopping. We didn't stop saying our prayers. We didn't stop any of our activities. We still lived. We didn't stop life because of the fear of a bomb and the fear of an attack in the IRA times, whether it be from the Protestants or from the Catholics. We didn't do that. Whereas what's happened today with you Americans, this is back in 2001, after September 11th, you're all afraid and you're not going to go out and shop or you're not going to go out and do things. You're going to stop living because of your health. Do you know it's more dangerous every morning when you get in the bathtub, you can slip and fall down and die. It's very dangerous. You know, there was an epidemic last year, over 100,000 people, many thousands of people died from electrocution last year. So there was an electricity virus going around. Therefore, we must be very careful about electricity, and we have to stop the electricity virus. You know that every time you walk by an outlet, if you would lick your fingers and stick it into the outlet, this would cause you unhappiness. It's a grave danger. And if the fan falls over into the bathtub, you're going to get fried. And therefore, it's very dangerous to have electric lights on when you're taking a shower. It's very dangerous to be involved in electricity. You must be safe. You must be safe. You must be safe. And the God of safety is being used to make us slaves. And the devil is testing who is ready to follow this new God of safety. We want to have a nerf society in which there will no longer be anything that damages us. There'll be Nerf footballs and Nerf basketballs and Nerf bullets and Nerf cars. You know, more people died on the roads last year in any one state than died from this coronavirus or, in, or in anthrax multiple years ago. So therefore, we should stop the use of cars. It is insane. Not only in the supernatural level, but on the natural level. And the devil is testing he wants to make sure that those in his world, world government are going to be perfectly obedient. And they're not going to question anything. And he also wants to know what is most important. Is our soul most important or is our body most important? And it turns out for most of us, it's the body that's most important. 
We have to make sure that we're stocked up and ready. And we forget about the gospel. We forget that things have not changed. That 2,000 years ago, our Lord Jesus Christ said, there was a man who wanted to be prepared for the winter. As we mentioned yesterday, there are many winters. There is the cold winter, the normal winter, when there is no food. There is the winter of famine. There is the winter of war. There is a winter in which things are scarce because of the troubles of war, of sickness, of famine, and of the cold. There are multiple winters. The problem was that the man prepared for the winter, but he prepared for the wrong one. He stored up all things in a barn. He stored up everything he had inside of a barn. And when he stored everything in the barn, he was ready for the winter. But the Gospel tells us, and the Lord Jesus Christ tells us, but in the middle of the night, the man died. And one of my parishioners called me a couple days ago, on Friday, in the middle of nowhere America, not in the big cities, in a very small backwoods place in the country, and visiting the, the local store, the Walmart or the grocery store, whichever it was, heard a lady, not a man, but a lady of some size, a lady said with her little baby, and she said, you know what? I am going to buy bullets. I'm not just going to buy food, because I'm not going to starve. If I and my child are missing food, I'm going to a rich man's house and I'm going to shoot him and take his stuff. This is not a criminal. Someone who does not have a criminal record. It's a mother. We are, how corrupted are our people at this time? As I mentioned also the other day, that in 1976 or 77, whichever year it was, in New York City, there was a, there was a blackout. And throughout the night in the summertime, there was no light. In 1958 or 59 or 60, in the same New York City, there was a blackout that lasted through the night. Now, the 1959 blackout, whichever year it was, in the late 50s, there was no murders, there were very little crime, and the people went out on the streets and lit candles and talked to one another and, and uh, cooked out barbecues and had a great time. But in 1977, there was a blackout in New York City, and they beat up the police. And they robbed the stores, and they stole TVs, and they stole all kinds of items, and there was a riot and a complete destruction of New York City in the course of the night. Now, what was the cause of that? One riot was before Vatican II, and the other riot, well, the other one blackout was before Vatican II, the other blackout was after Vatican II. And already most people told me, I'm not afraid of the virus, or any other virus they have, I'm afraid of the people. They are so quickly ready to go to complete anarchy and live like animals and murder their fellow neighbor and steal their neighbor's things because their God is their belly and their God is their own health. And now who is the God that governs us? Many of these who will do these things are called Catholics. Many are called traditional Catholics. And they are trying to cover their own behinds and make sure that they feel good and they are directed well. And they are following the government and they are following the rules and they are being obedient. And they forget that when the commies take over, they don't care about papers like this one here. The communists of South America, they took the priests who were communists and they hung them from the telephone poles. They didn't just hang the Catholic priests that were good, they hung the bad priests. And now we see the situation that the church, the Pope is trying to acquiesce and show that he is going to, be, he is going to close all the churches because of the sake of health. Now, if there was a genuine massive pandemic killing hundreds of thousands of people like the Great Plague back in the Middle Ages, then it would be legitimate to do these kinds of things. But there is no great pandemic. There isn't, at least not yet. And there are not signs of it being that way yet either. But there is a control going on. There is a rule going on. And there's a test. Who are going to be the good citizens? And here we have the letter from Father Wegner, the Superior of the Society of St. Pius X in the United States District, on March 14th, just yesterday, the day of the 15th, the Ides of March, the day in which Julius Caesar was killed, and the day in which the uh, Romulus Augustus was removed as the last emperor of the Holy Roman Empire by Odovacher in 476 AD, and placed into a monastery, a little boy, the last emperor. And on these days of the Ides of March, this Sunday, and yesterday there was a the district of rules, some practical directives, three parts, and the third part is some practical directives of the U.S. District in response to the spread of the COVID-19 coronavirus. They are as follows. 
Number one, anyone who feels even slightly ill must not attend Mass Sundays or weekdays. Attending Mass when someone is ill is uncharitable to one's fellow parishioners. This applies particularly to children who often are not careful about hygiene. You know, we're at the end of the winter time, and this is a very often people have some kind of a cold or some kind of a flu, and uh, they go to Mass and there's no trouble. But now we say, you know, that we're going to be good citizens. Attending Mass when someone is ill is uncharitable to one's fellow parishioners. This applies to the children who often are not careful about hygiene. We do not wish to instill fear in the people. Wherever the children can unintentionally spread illness to the elderly, for whom it would be more grave. Number two, Father Wagner personally dispenses all the sick and elderly from the Sunday obligation until further notice. They say that those that are over the age of 65, so Father Wagner personally dispenses all the sick. Now this is a bit of a problem because only the bishop can give a dispensation, the bishop of the diocese. The priest doesn't give a dispensation. Of course, he can give a dispensation to his own faithful. And as we are told in the Society of St. Pius X, we were taught very much when I was in the seminary, well, my superior does not give delegations or dispensations. I receive them directly because of the crisis in the church. I give the dispensation to my local people. I don't get it from my superior. This would be setting up a parallel church. My superior can tell me, I recommend that you give a dispensation. Well, I give the dispensation. The proper way to put this directive into practice, according to moral theology and canon law, following the traditional moral theology and canon law, is that the Father Wagner would say, I recommend each of the individual priests in the diocese of, of, of the parishes to give this directive. And they give it on their own, according to their own local conditions. And so, because the conditions are not the same in every place. Father Wagner personally dispenses all the sick and elderly from the Sunday obligation until further notice. For those who are unable to attend Mass, and Mass and the sermon will broadcast online every Sunday. You will find the link to broadcast at sspx.org. You will find the link at 469 Twitter. Who that one? <laughs> holy water fonts are to be emptied. An adequate supply of holy water will nevertheless be ensured so that the laity may fill their own bottles for the use of home and on entering the church. They're going to empty the holy water bottles. It's not safe to have holy water. Not safe to drive out the devil. Holy water is dangerous. You know what? As an expert in health, Catholic holy water is the best kind of holy water because it's got salt in it, and salt's a preservative. Now, if you have if you have no sort of holy water that doesn't have any salt in it, and it's not even holy anyway, dump it out. But if you have real holy water, use it. And here he is saying, we're going to empty all the holy water fonts. Is there a directive from Washington, D.C., from Donald Trump, and from the communists and masons in charge throughout the world, that we have to dump out holy water? It is very much like once in a, in a famous battle, I can't remember the name of the battle, but a battle in the French army. In the French army in the time of Napoleon, there was a very good French general. I don't remember his name. Very moral Catholic French general. Very moral Catholics, of course. He got killed in a battle. And the next general took his place. And in the next battle, they won the battle. And the new general said, are the men raping and pillaging yet? And they said, no, our other general never allowed that to happen. He said, okay, tell the men that I'll be sleeping and resting unavailable for the next 30 minutes. And what? Tell the men that the general will be sleeping and unavailable for the next 30 minutes. Went, oh, they raped and pillaged for 30 minutes. He did not command them to rape and pillage. All he did was say, I'm going to be unavailable. What do you mean you've been available? I'm going to be unavailable. So my commander comes to me and says, why was a rape and pillaging happening after that battle? He says, I don't know. I, I was sleeping at the time. I, did, I would never allow such a thing. He did not give the directive. He allowed it to be known that this is what was expected. And this is one of the tests in an army. Are you going to do what's expected without being directed? And this says that we're going to take all the holy water out of the holy water fonts until further notice. So that if a priest puts holy water in the holy water font, he will be being disobedient to his superior. If you walk into a church and you dip your finger in the holy water font and make the sign of the cross, you will be endangering yourself. Is this from God? Directive number three, no. All food handling 
coffee, donut time after masses, potluck, St. Joseph tables is canceled until further notice. Number five. If there are government rulings regarding canceling or reducing the size of gatherings, we will follow the lawful government orders. Now, of course, we must always follow the lawful government orders. You have to recognize that. If the government makes some kind of a law, uh, some kind of a directive, we must follow the directives unless they're directly contrary to the law of God, like abortion and so on. But there's no need to put that into, that's a given. That's part of the, that's part of the rule of any Catholic church. We must follow the local directives. We don't speed we have people we don't put a 50 mile an hour speed limit sign in our in our parking lot. That's a standard speed limit in the parking lot. If somebody's going 30 miles an hour in one of our parking lots, they'll be breaking the rules, endangering some kids, and they can be given a ticket. And so that we, we follow the, the basic normal laws of, of the government without any trouble. That's our normal rule. There doesn't need to be a special directive saying that. Number five, if there are government rulings regarding cancellation or reduces size of gatherings, we'll follow lawful government orders. Number six. All, necess all unnecessary public gatherings will be canceled. Your local priest or coordinator will be in contact regarding specific events at your chapel or school. This will attend the local priest handling his own problems. A directive from on high from Kansas City, all events and parishes will be canceled until further notice. When's the further notice? Number seven. In parishes where masses tend to be very full, priests, if possible, will add additional masses to reduce the number of faithful at any given mass. Number eight, a new federal ruling as of February, Friday, February, March 13th, prohibits all visits to nursing homes outside the danger of death until further notice. So there's a federal ruling that says you can't visit all nurse, nursing homes outside the danger of death until further notice. This also applies to regular sick calls. So the priest is not to be called for the normal sick calls. And all the time, when we go to, we go to sick calls all the time, all the time, two in the morning, whatever time we go to the sick calls, and we, of course, go to the sick and take care of them. The regular sick calls will also be canceled. How many souls are going to die without the sacraments because of that ruling? Number nine, priests and laity should be also careful not to shake hands. So no shaking of hands. <laughs> Do not shake hands because this is unsafe behavior. You should not shake hands. And so that uh, the, uh, so be careful not to shake hands. This is a directive from on high. These people need to change their medication. This is insanity. So rule number 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 eight, number nine, is do not shake hands. This is to show that we're very good citizens in the SSPX. Number ten, laity who are feeling ill should not request appointments with priests. I think you're all feeling ill today. <laughs> Looks sick to me. No appointments. You want to make an appointment? Are you sure you're healthy? You don't look healthy. You don't sound healthy. When was the last time you made an appointment with the priest? Father, I wanted to call you up because I'm doing great. I just wanted to come and say I'm feeling great. I'm doing great. Everything's wonderful. When was the last time you went to a doctor because you were healthy? When do you go to a priest? When you've got a problem. Do not make any appointments with Padre outside of an emergency. Now consider the lives of the saints for our schools. The saints went in to epidemic and pandemic places and they took care of the lepers and then they died of leprosy, many of them. They took care of those who were in great epidemics. And one of the priests goes in where there is trouble. That's where he's supposed to go. He is supposed to be where the danger is. He is supposed to be where the trouble is in order to heal and work with those people that are in trouble. But no, we've got to keep our priests safe. For our schools, where government order cl cl ordered closures have been put in place, we will abide by those closures. Private schools are not obliged to do that, but we're going to do that. Schools will provide work for students to do at home in some format. Notice what's going to happen in the next three weeks. You know that in the old days, children used to go to school. We used to call them children. There were the male ones we called boys, and there were the female ones we called girls. Now, little Satans go to school. <laughs> Little imps and little devils go to school. Now, when these little imps and these little devils are not in school, what's going to happen? They're going to rob their first 7-Eleven. They're going to take their first set of drugs. They're going to be involved in rape and incest. There's going to be every kind of sin imaginable going on throughout the whole of the United States because of the wildness of modern kids. And there will be disruption of families, disruption of work and business, 
One decree in Idaho says that we're going to close all the schools. But we realize that mommy and daddy are both working, so the schools remain closed, but we'll turn the schools into daycare centers. These people are really stupid. So you're going to close the schools. Why? So the kids aren't together in the school. Then you're going to open them as daycare centers. And this is interesting. Why are they doing that? To keep the teachers safe. To keep the priests safe. To keep the millionaires safe. Some of them are going into bunkers. But what is the duty of the leaders of society? Teachers are supposed to take care of children being safe, not themselves being safe. Priests will make sure that their their flock is safe, not themselves. This is a demonic, upside down, wicked society, and this is an example of how the Catholic faith and the spirit of the Catholic faith is dead in the society of Saint Pius the Tenth. Would would Saint Gregory the Great write a decree like this? Would Saint Pius the Tenth or Saint John Newman? Or any other saint, bishop of the church, Saint Augustine, would they behave like this? Absolutely not. This is very, very bad. Even if the government has not ordered schools closed, we will close for 14 days if any student or teacher tests positive for the COVID-19. In all cases, if the school is closed, it must be disinfected before the students return. Parents should not send their children to school if they are ill, even with a minor ailment. Children kept at home should be kept separate from other children. Parents should keep any sick child away from the elderly. So if you live in a small trailer, put the sick kid outside. <laughs> Keep them it's, it's always good in the wintertime. Come back every day, every once in a while, and check in on him. See if he's still alive. If he's still alive, then fine. If he's not, well, then at least you didn't spread the virus. <laughs> Last year, with everyone else, we will take a financial toll on your chapel and the school. Please be mindful of what you personally can do to help. Please continue your regular support of the church and the clergy in general, and specifically to your chapel or school. I understand that many of you might be financially affected by this as well, but almsgiving is a concrete way of living this Lent. So, Dami Tipikuniyam. Give me the money. You're supposed to support the church. That's a good thing. But what is the church supposed to do? The church is supposed to sacrifice itself for the good of the sheep. And this is very clear. What is the spirit of these priests? What is the spirit of this church? Are these the, the captains we want to follow in the battle? Everyone charge. I'm going into a bunker. I'll send a note. I'll send a runner up ahead. What you're supposed to do. The captain must be the first one on the battlefield and the last one off. This is not of Christ. And this is only one small example of of how the society of St. Pius X is no longer following Christ. It is a virus, a supernatural virus, that is inside of Catholic tradition, destroying our minds, destroying our souls, ripping apart our hearts. And when the great tests come, there will be failure. As we mentioned a few days ago, remember Reuben. Reuben was the eldest son of uh, Jacob. He should have been the great-grandfather of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He should have been the great-grandfather of our Lord Jesus Christ and St. Joseph. But he was not. Isaac was angry with Reuben. Jacob, rather, was angry with Reuben. He did not bless him. It was the fourth son, Judah, who would be blessed, but not Reuben. And remember that one day Joseph came, and Joseph came in order to see his brothers in Dotaim. They were supposed to be in Sechem, but they weren't there. He went to Dotaim, and he went to his brothers to see how they were doing. And they said... Here comes the Somniator. Here comes the dreamer. Let us kill him and see how his dreams support him, how his dreams avail him. And Reuben said, don't kill him. And the scripture tells us Reuben wanted to save Joseph. Judah did not want to save Joseph. Later on, he would change his mind, and Judah would say, let's not kill him, let's sell him into slavery. But on this day, Judah wanted to kill Joseph. Levi wanted to kill Joseph. They both wanted his death. And Levi, as a father of the priests, and all priests to this day are called Levites. We are Levites in the New Testament. 
And our great great grandfather, our spiritual great great grandfather, when he saw Joseph the dreamer, he said, Kill him. And Judah is a great great grandfather of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and St. Joseph. And when he saw Joseph, he said, Kill him. But Reuben was nice. Reuben wanted to help. And Reuben said, let us not kill our brother, but rather let's sow him in this well. And then let's all go. Let him die in the well. He didn't want him to know that he was against not the death of, of Joseph. And he said, go in the well. He walked away, and they walked away, and they began to. But he walked away to give him a good example about walking away. He came back many hours later, and the well was empty. And Joseph was not there because his brothers had already sold him into slavery. And he rent his garments and he wept. Reuben was not blessed by God. Reuben was not the grandfather of our Lord Jesus Christ. Reuben was passed over and Isaac was angry with Reuben. And when Reuben came back home and all the other brothers said, Look at this coat of many colors. For it is filled with blood. Joseph was killed by the beasts. And Reuben said, Reuben, you're the eldest. Is that true? Yes, it's true, Father. He lied to his father. He was afraid to tell his father the truth. But he believed the truth. He did not want his brother to die. But he didn't do the right thing. He tried to be conservative. He tried to be balanced. He tried to be in between. And Judah, who hated Joseph, he became the grandfather of our Lord Jesus Christ and the grandfather of St. Joseph. Our Lord doesn't choose us as, we, as man chooses. We have many Rubens in the church today and they are not succeeding. They are failures. We must not be Rubens. Our Lord himself said, I would that you are hot or cold, but if you are lukewarm, I will begin to vomit you out of my mouth. So many lukewarm good people. We are not meant to be that way. It is better to be hot or cold than to be lukewarm. And so today, we want to be good Catholics and still be the exemplary citizens. We're going to take away the holy water. Is that going to make the angels happy? It will, the angels of hell. But what about the angels of heaven? We're going to tell people, don't shake hands. So when somebody in the parish hall comes in and says, oh, my name is Bob, don't do that. <laughs> it is going to kill charity in the interest of health. And these same fools who want to make excessive care of their own health, even beyond what anyone is doing in the normal pagan world, they are not concerned about the health of their souls. We must remember that the health of our soul is far more important than the health of our body. And we follow all directives of the government anyway that are not sinful or harmful or against God. We already do that anyway. And the fact is that we do, there must be a legitimate reason. This is insanity. What are we doing? Trying to show that we're really good citizens and the government will love us. Will the government love the SSPX? No. No, they won't. Will this save Father Wagner and the priest in society? It won't save them from the devil, and it won't save them from God. It's bad on both sides. We ought to follow the gospel the right way and not the wrong way. This is insanity. So in any case, it is a test. Are we ready to go with God? Is our soul more important than our body? What is most important to us? Let's make sure the soul is most important. And that we stand to ask the grace to persevere in this test and hold our faith, wish we had Martin all the way until death. And the Lady of God will protect us, God will protect us, the angel will protect us. Lord, I bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.